Do old trading systems that have been around for decades still work today? To answer that question, I backtested a very well-known trading system, which has been originally made public in 1986, so over 30 years ago. This system is called the triple screen trading system, and I was curious to see whether it stands the test of time even after over 30 years, so I backtested it on 14 years of data and will share the results with you in this video. I will go over the complete set of rules of the system and show you its example trade, and then I will analyze its performance and share my opinion about whether you should start trading it or not. Let's start firstly by going over the rules of this trading system step by step. The triple screen system is a trend following system developed back in 1986 and in its original form it combines three different time frames and three different trade setup conditions, hence the name triple screen. Now the variation I will present and test in this video is a swing variation of this system with two time frames used instead of three. I will use weekly and daily time frame. The weekly time frame is used to determine the trend of the market and the daily time frame is used to screen for the trade setups. I made this slight change so that I could backtest this system with the software that I used to backtest swing trading strategies on daily time frames. The core of the triple screen system is a trend following indicator called MACD which is a very popular trading indicator that you would have um, likely come across before. I've got this indicator shown below my weekly chart consisting of two lines. This indicator is applied on the first time frame which is the highest time frame. In case of the system variation I'm presenting in this video this is a weekly time frame. The rationale is to use the MACD to determine the overall longer term trend of the market on this higher time frame. Now normally the MACD would have been used as a timing tool for trend following setups where this turquoise line crosses above the yellow line like it did here. This system however uses the MACD in a slightly different way. Instead of using the crosses of MACD lines it works with the net difference of these two lines as I've just indicated. This difference is normally plotted in a form of a histogram so let's just get rid of these two lines and plot the histogram instead. The first rule or screen of the triple screen system is based on the MACD histogram that I've just plotted below my chart. The rule is that its reading has to be positive to go long, so to buy. As I'm testing this system on stocks, I'm testing it in a long only version. So in this area, the first rule is not satisfied as the MACD histogram readings are below zero, so negative. This means that the triple screen system would not be looking to buy this particular stock at this point in time. However, that would have changed at this point where the stock's price started rising, resulting in the MACD histogram readings now being positive. The logic of this first rule is that if the MACD histogram readings are positive on this weekly time frame, then the market is deemed to be in an uptrend, which means it's suitable to trade. In such case, we move on to the second screen of the triple screen system by now switching to our primary daily time frame. I have now switched to daily time frame. Over here, I've got two lines plotted below my chart. These are the two indicators that the triple screen system uses. The turquoise line is called bull power and the yellow line is called bear power. Now, these are some fancy names, but essentially the calculation of these two lines is very, very simple. The bull power line, so the turquoise line, measures the distance between the bar's high price and the value of the exponential moving average with a period of 13, which is plotted in this bluish color on the price chart. So essentially this bull power indicator measures how far is the candle's high from the EMA 13. The yellow line, the bear power, calculates the same thing by using the candlestick's low instead. So it measures how far is the candle's low from the exponential moving average. Now, the logic of these two indicators is very simple. They are used to measure the strength of buyers and sellers expressed as a distance between highs and EMA and lows and EMA. The bull power is used when going short and the bear power is used to go long. Now, since I'm testing this system long only, we will be working with bear power only. So let me just zoom in a little bit to explain how it's being used. The bear power is the second screen or rule of the system. The rule is actually twofold. To go long, the bear power reading at the previous candle has to be negative, so below zero, which is plotted in the form of a red horizontal line. And also the bear power at the current candle 
has to be negative as well, but higher than at previous candle. Both requirements are met at these two candles I've just highlighted on the screen. The logic of this rule is that to go long, we want to see the bear power be negative, but rising when compared to the previous candle. This translates to the bears or sellers not being strong enough to keep pushing these candlestick lows further away from the exponential moving average. Remember, the bear power measures how far the candlestick's low is from the moving average. So the lower the bear power reading, the further the low is from the moving average. The second rule of the triple screen system therefore speculates that the sellers were exhausted by not being able to push the prices lower, which when combined with the fact that the MACD histogram is positive on a weekly time frame, is a buying opportunity of the system. And now onto the third rule. The requirement to go long is that the current candle's high exceeds the high of the previous candle. So the current candle is this one. And if I look at the previous candle, take its high, we can see that it was exceeded by the current candle's high. This acts as a final requirement to go long using the triple screen trading system. More specifically, the long trade gets open by using the buy stop order that's placed at the level of the previous candle's high. This is how I tested the system. Alternatively, long trade can be open at close instead, provided that the current bar's high is greater than that of the previous candle. So those were all the rules of the long only swing version of the triple screen trading system that I tested. To quickly recap, there are three trade uh, setup rules or screens. Number one is that the market is deemed to be in an uptrend on a weekly time frame, which is confirmed by MACD histogram being above zero. Second is that the bear power indicator on daily time frame is negative, so below zero, but has risen when compared to the previous candlestick. This acts as a confirmation that the sellers are exhausted and not able to keep making new price lows. Third rule is that the current candlestick makes a new high when compared to the previous candlestick. The entry is made at the level of the previous candlestick's high using a buy stop order. Alternatively, long trade can be open at close using the market on close order type. As far as the stop loss and profit target is concerned, I will be testing this system with a trailing 20% stop loss, which is plotted in the form of a yellow dashed line visible on the screen. Profit target is fixed at 30% to allow for high risk to reward ratio. So here is an example long trade entered into at this candlestick. This green horizontal line is the 30% profit target and this yellow dashed line is the trailing stop loss. Now this particular trade was closed at a profit target upon the price reaching the green line here. But if the open trade was managed only by trailing stop loss, it would have been closed here where the price hit the yellow dashed line. Now, having gone over the rules and an example trade of the triple screen system, let's have a look at the backtest results to see whether a trading strategy that's over 30 years old stands the test of time. I've tested this system from 2004 up to the end of 2020 on all stocks that belong to S&P 500 with the backtest results shown on the screen. A couple of things to note, I've tested the system to hold a maximum of 10 positions simultaneously. In case of multiple signals, the system ranks these based on a stock's historical volatility, where the lower the stock's volatility, the better. As always, I included the trading commissions, same as I get myself with my own broker. I've tested the system with starting capital of $30,000 using 50% margin. The equity curve is shown on the screen. I was actually positively surprised myself to see that this system clearly shows an edge after more than 30 years of being public. That's definitely not to say that I would just take the system in its current form and trade it. I would definitely need to develop it further as its equity curve is visually quite volatile. We can see that this system had been through some periods of significant volatility and drawdowns, like the one here, for instance, then also here, and more recently, at the beginning of 2020 here. Now let's see how the performance metrics are looking. As I mentioned previously, the initial capital was set to $30,000 with 50% margin used, meaning leverage of one to two. 
the average annual return is just under 12% and this is after counting for trading commissions. Now one important figure to note here is the number of trades. It's only at 107 trades made from 2004 up to the end of 2020. Now this is because the system uses a combination of big profit target and a trailing stop loss which results in an extremely long hold period. In fact it exceeds one year on average. As such, my recommendation, should you wish to take the system and experiment with it, is to first and foremost work on exits with a view of shortening the average hold time. In its current form, I would not personally trade the system myself as it holds its trades for far too long for my liking, where I would actually favor some tactical asset allocation models over this system. Having said that, it's definitely a workable trading strategy for further development. Last figure to point out here is the maximum drawdown, which is surprisingly not as bad as I would be expecting. Typically with uh, slow trend following systems like this one, you could be looking at figures as big as 40%. Uh, bear in mind that this is with the leverage already applied, and uh, so it would have been smaller when not using leverage, but obviously the profit figure would go down also. So all in all, definitely workable trading system that has shown a surprising robustness. I would not personally trade it in its current form, as I said, and would recommend to work on exits to shorten its trade holding duration and increase the capital turnover. Also, its application on some futures markets or even day trading version would certainly be interesting to look into. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. David at Critical Trading, signing out.